Sixth grade, you have a review today for your language test. And we have two more. Today and tomorrow we have review. And then, um, let's see, Thursday we'll take our test. And then we're done with language, guys. Uh, we'll probably be just doing some book reports after this. Probably take um, Friday off. And then we'll start fresh on Monday, next Monday. Um, with reading and then writing a report. So, you guys are on the homeward stretch for this language book. I know you guys are excited about that. All right, let's go over our language review. We're going to divide it up into two sections because it's pretty long again. So, um, we're going to start at the first page. You have your language review in front of you and follow along with me. The first part I have here is called using verbs correctly. It says, I wrote down, you need to read the sentence first and then find the verb. And the reason I want you to read the sentence first is um, it's easier to pick out the verb when you read the sentence, what it's talking about. And I gave you a few examples, um, just a minute. I gave you three examples of verbs, but you actually on your test you have 12 of these. And what you're going to be doing, it says if a sentence contains an error, underline the error and write the correct verb in the blank. If there are no verb errors, write correct in the blank. So you're going to have a few sentences that are correct and um, more than not, you're going to have places that you need to fix. And so we're going to go over some of your rules for your um, verbs. The first sentence I put down, I have the construction worker drug or dragged the bag of concrete. Remember, <clears throat> one of these words is actually not a correct verb. Do you remember what it was? Actually, do you remember? the correct verb that we are supposed to say, which one's correct and which one is not. Dragged, you are right. Dragged is the correct verb. Drug is not a verb that we need to use when we're pulling something. It's not a verb. So the construction worker dragged the bag of concrete. All right, we seen or we saw a woodpecker today. Now, one of these verbs needs a helping verb. Do you remember, or do you, yeah, do you remember which one it is? Um, we should say, we saw a woodpecker. Have seen or had seen is when you would use seen. Seen needs a helping verb. We saw a woodpecker today. All right, and then, the third sentence I have is eventually all the bubbles busted. Do you remember anything about that? Do we say the word busted? Cheyenne, what do you think? Cheyenne thinks we should say burst, not busted. And that is correct. Eventually all the bubbles burst. Burst is the correct verb. Now they're also going to be in this section, they're going to be using the verbs lie and lay, rise and raise, sit and set, um, can and may. All of those, remember there's different ways that you need to use those and I have it down here, I wrote it down. When we use sit or set, sit means to be seated, where you are actually doing the action, you are sitting down on something or sitting I have the sentence sitting beside something, but you're actually sitting. And the, and the verbs for those are sit, sat, or sitting. Those all go along the same rules as meaning to be seated. Kim sits beside Starla. I am actually sitting beside. I am actually doing the sitting. When you set, means to put something somewhere. I have, she set the blanket on the table. 
you actually means to put something in place and set or setting would go along with that so in on your test if you come down with uh, I mean if you come to a sentence that's using sit or set remember sit is when something somebody is actually sitting setting is somebody's placing something somewhere okay that's the difference between sit and set rise and raise is a little bit the same way uh, rise is you are actually coming up it means to go up or to get up you can rise you can be rising you can have rose or risen the bread rose um, it's actually the bread is actually coming up I rose from my chair the Sun will rise it's actually coming up raise means somebody has to lift something up or push something up I raise your hand you're lifting your hand raise the window um, raise the flag somebody has pushing something up or lifting something up so on your test if you come to a place where you're using rise or raise remember rise is for you to get up or to stand up or whatever raise is where you are pushing something up um, another one is lie and lay lie means to recline and lie lying lay or lane it's where you yourself are laying down Emily is lying on her bed she's actually reclining it means to recline lay again means to put something it's kind of like set you're putting something in place the men laid the mulch in the flower bed they laid it down um, so remember lay is you're placing something somewhere um, and lie is where you actually yourself or the thing or the person or whatever lay down okay can and may that one's fairly easy to remember can is just I can memorize my Bible memory I can wash the dishes um, I can clean my house I can make my bread means your ability to do something if you say may you're asking for permission may I go to my friend's house uh, you're asking permission to do something so sometimes we say can I go to my friend's house and you know what my my mom used to say I don't know if you can or not or if I would ask my teacher can I go to the bathroom she'd say I don't know can you okay can is not when we ask for permission it's may may I go to the bathroom oh yeah sure um, can means I can do something I, my ability to do something all right so that's what you're gonna need to know for using your verbs um, I did not do all of them but that gives you an idea of some things that you need to do just remember read your sentence very carefully and slowly and you should be able to figure out the sentence the next part you have is pronoun case I have down subject and verb agreement uh, they have pronoun case and agreement and <clears throat> what they're doing well I'll just start here remember when you have a singular subject you need a singular verb okay so make sure that if your subject is <clears throat> and what I'm calling subject um, a lot of them, them are pronouns but just remember um, and I have down here I want you to study page 165 today on the different pronoun cases and notice what they function as and what I'm talking about is 
on your pronoun cases, and I don't have my book here in front of me, but just remember there are some pronouns that can will always function as subjects and predicate nominatives. And then there's pronouns that function as direct object, indirect object, and object of preposition. And what you're going to need to know, you're going to need to know that because if you know that on your test, you're going to be picking out, should I use we or me or should I use I or he or if you if you know you can look okay this one is functioning as a subject okay which pronouns always function as subjects or which this one is functioning as a direct object which pronoun would function as a direct object <clears throat> but there's also some going to be where you if you know this subject is singular um, then, okay, so take for instance, I'm just thinking some singular pronouns, like um, I wrote some down here. Some pronouns are always singular. Each, that means this or this, each, everyone. That's, it sounds like there's a whole pile of people, and it is everyone, but we're all in a group. We're like all of us, every one of us. Or neither, neither this or this, singular. Neither. Nobody. Nobody, that's all, that's a singular subject or pronoun. Anybody is another one. That's always singular. Some pronouns are always plural. <clears throat> both. That's, there's two, two things, both of them. Few. There's just a few pens. Um, several. There's several pens. It's not going to be just one. There's a group of them. And many. That's another one that's always plural. There's a lot of them. So what I'm saying about subjects and verbs agreeing, so if I use the subject both, which is a plural, then my verb is going to have to agree with the word both, which is a plural subject. I'm going to need a plural verb. In other words, you don't say both is. We know that is is singular. We would say both are. So if you're looking at your subject, finding your subject, you can find the correct verb to agree with that. You're going to be underlining, um, sometimes you're going to be underlining the verb, sometimes you're going to be underlining the correct direct object. It's going to be in a pronoun form, but maybe you're underlining the correct direct object. Or maybe you're underlining the correct subject. It's going to be pronouns. He, she, it, us, they, them. You're going to need to know which ones function as subjects, which ones function as direct objects. That's why I, need to, why I want you to study page 165 in those pronoun cases. Remember, subjects are sometimes joined by the conjunction and and are referred to as one. And I have some down here, macaroni and cheese. That's not plural, that's singular, one. Macaroni and cheese, you don't separate macaroni and the cheese, to, I mean by itself, it's one. Ham and eggs, not ham and eggs. Ham and eggs are referred to as one. Um, watch for things like that. They, I think they're gonna be giving you some of that. Um, there's some pronoun, no, I read that. Remember, plural no nouns often end in S. Like if you have a plural subject, um, pencils, you don't say pencils is because pencils are plural. You say pencils are. The cars are. Um, pencil was or pencils were was and were. Those are singular and plural verbs. Watch for that. <clears throat> Let's see. 